Hello, my name is Dr. Jerry Burkett and I'm an assistant professor of educational leadership at Texas Women's University. I'm also a former principal and researcher in the area of principal effectiveness. So I want to take a moment to thank you for being part of my study today. And I also want to thank Richardson ISD for letting me participate and work with your campuses on developing this research study. In a few moments, I'm going to be showing you the principal effectiveness evaluation rubric or peer and how we will use the rubric in order for us to judge or rate your current principal on their principal effectiveness. It's an area of interest of mine and I appreciate your help in doing this. But I also want to remind you that before I go over the rubric with you that your participation in this research study is purely anonymous and 100% voluntary. So if at any point you decide that you're not interested in being part of this study, you simply just do not have to participate. But I want to make sure that you understand how the rubric is used so that you can rate and judge appropriately if you decide you do want to participate when you enter your ratings into the website that I can use for my data collection. So we're going to be doing this two times during the course of the year, at the beginning of the year and at the end of the year so we can get a comparison. And the idea is that this is to be a full 360 degree evaluation tool, meaning teachers will evaluate the principal, the principal will evaluate themselves, and the principal's immediate supervisor will also be evaluating them. So it will give me an idea and a baseline of what true principal effectiveness looks like. And as I'll explain in the peer evaluation rubric, uh, when I talk to you about the rubric and explain that to you, what I want to make clear to you is that uh, this is judging or evaluating your principal currently as they stand right now. So I, I'm not interested in, in what happened in 2022 or even prior to that. We want to be looking at the evaluation of your principal or supervisor right now, currently in 2023. So again, thank you so much for your help and your support. I appreciate your participation. So now let's take a look at the rubric. So now let's take a moment to look at the Principal Effectiveness Evaluation Rubric, or PEER. This rubric was designed based upon my research on principal effectiveness. And as you look through the rubric, you'll notice that there are five domains. And we'll look here at domain one. Uh, and for each domain, we have a variety of components. Now for the rubric, we have four categories that we can gauge our principal on, from exemplary, accomplished, developing, and beginning. And there are descriptors for each of the components that we're judging them on. For example, professional appearance, respectful, personality, and ethical behaviors. And you can read the strands for each of these. So to use this rubric effectively, what we want to do is we want to start right in the middle. We want to start at the three. And what we're going to do is, is we're going to read the strands. So for professional appearance, we'll start with the principal practices the standards for professional dress on most occasions. Now, when thinking about your current principal, you have to make a decision. Is this statement true? Or is it more than true or less than true? And from that decision point, you have to decide whether to go up on the rubric or to go down on the rubric. So if you read this statement about your principal and you think that it could be more than true, then you want to bump up to exemplary and read the descriptor for this. The principal is professionally dressed and properly groomed regularly. So if that was true all the time, you will give your principal a four for professional appearance. Now, if you read the accomplished under three and you read the principal practices standards for professional dress on most occasions, if you feel that that's untrue, then you need to bump down to the next level and read the strand for developing. The principal is rarely consistent with professional dress and grooming expectations. So then what you would do is you ask yourself the same question. Is that true? And if the answer is no, then you would go down to beginning and read the descriptor for that. So what you would do then is give the rating based upon your perception of whether the strand meets that particular indicator. So for each domain and for each strand, you want to always start at three. Read the strand and then either work your way up or work your way down depending upon what the statement is. Now, if you read three and they meet that descriptor all of the time, then of course you're going to give your principal a three. But if you feel that, no, they're not a three, they're a little better than that, they're probably a four, then read the descriptor and make a decision. If the descriptor doesn't match what you think your perception of the principal is, then give them the three. 
But if you think it meets the definition of a four, then obviously give them the four. The same would be true for developing. If it meets this definition, then obviously give them the two. But for any rubric of this caliber, what we want to do is always start at three, and then work our way down or work our way up based upon the descriptor language. So when thinking about your principle, what you'll want to do is start with domain one, go through each of the strands, and judge them appropriately based upon your perception. Then move on to domain two, leadership skills, and do the same thing for each of these components. Start at a three, read the descriptor. If it meets that definition, great, give them the three. If it doesn't, then go up or go down based upon your perception. We would go then to domain three, teacher and student advocacy, reading each of the components and following the same thing. Domain four, we're going to be looking at culture and climate. And lastly, we're going to be looking at listening and communication for domain five. So what's important here is as you go through this rubric, you need to be thinking about your current principle. Don't be thinking about previous principles. Don't think about your assistant principal. I want you to think about your current campus leader and how they are operating and working right now at this moment in time in 2023. And at the end of the year, we'll do the same assessment for the same principle. Now conceptually, the way this works to be a 360 degree evaluation, your principal is also going to be doing this same assessment on themselves and the principal will be, uh, principal's boss is going to be doing this exact same assessment so that I get a true 360 degree profile of your principal. So that is how we work the rubric and that is how we judge uh, based upon our own perceptions of the tool. So as you can see, the rubric is pretty easy to use following the five domains and each of the components and the strands that are listed. So simply follow the descriptors, start yourself at a three, work your, so you work your way up to a four or down to a two or a one depending on what you think the descriptor should say or how it matches your perception of your principal. Uh, and again, we will do this at the beginning of the year and we'll do this again at the end of the year. So if you have any questions about this rubric, any questions about the study, the purpose of this information, the data collection, anything at all, if you just need to verify confidentiality, I'm happy to do that. Please reach out to me at jburkett1 at twu.edu. So again, thank you so much for your participation and I look forward to working with Richardson ISD this school year. Thanks again.